What's good with it in the hood with it? Welcome back to the Collective Clips where you already know we get it in, right? But before we get it in, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Ding! Put your notification bell on all so that way you're directing to the direction of the dope content I am kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support, man. We're going up on this channel and it's all because of you. And for that, I can say I'm very humbled. Thank you guys very much. Oh, no, he didn't, right? Now... <clears throat> What I'm about to talk about, I'm only talking about because people asked me to. You know, I was asked several times to speak on the situation. And to be truthfully and honest with you, um, it's kind of a situation I could go without elaborating on or touching on. But at the same time, man, if the question was asked, I'm going to answer to the best of my capabilities. And again, this is just my perspective on the matter, my two cents. Um, Mr. Criminal, right? There's been a lot going on with him lately. And I did a video about a week ago uh, touching on the fact that he has now decided to go the Christian route um, to be called Pastor uh, uh, Crimes, right? Pastor Mace, Minister Silver Lake, you know, whatever, whatever title you want to give him, that's the route he has went. And I said in that spill, don't mock the Lord, homie. I said, don't. Use the, don't, don't use the Lord as a crutch, right? Don't become a Bible thumper and thump on the, on the King James version homes because you're scared or because you're at the end of your rope or because you want some type of sympathy or you really have no one else to turn to. Who can I run to? This is not an escape song homes. You know, a lot of people want to choose the Lord and they want to go that route when there's no one else to turn to. Okay, but where was your antennas when, you know, God was just doing his thing, been doing his thing, been walking alongside you, been blessing you. Where was the thanks for the blessings? You know, when you're talking that high power gang shit, when you're involved in a crime family and doing criminal activities or speaking upon criminal activities, you know, where was the Lord then? Mm -mm, nowhere to be found. Oh, he was there. You just didn't recognize it. That's like a lot of people that got good, solid homeboys or a good solid woman, she's right there, homie, they're right there, but you recognize them when it's too late, when they're gone, then you want them back, huh, but you can't get back what you always had, homes, once it's gone, it's gone, and you can't shun the Lord, and you definitely can't mock him, or utilize him, because you play with him, homes, and he'll play with you, the Lord giveth, and he taketh the fuck away, quicker than he giveth, right, and that's just how it is, so anyways, um, I said in that spill, I hope, uh, truthfully, that criminal, the rapper, was not playing with God's name or doing this for whatever reason. Um, and now it's looking like he was, man. Now it's looking like he is. And I could be totally wrong. But a lot of things have come up. So the other night, um, I'm kicking back, relaxing, and I'm looking for some music to bump. You know, I'm just chilling out on the couch. And I come across a song by a Mr. Diablo. And... Um, I had heard the story of Diablo. For those of you that don't know his story, he was actually a rapper that rapped or was involved in the same group, Crime Family, with Mr. Criminal. Um, they did a lot of music together. In fact, I know Mr. Criminal just did a, a podcast. On his podcast, he had this individual call in from, I believe, Pelican Bay because he's now doing life in prison uh, behind an alleged murder that he supposedly was involved in. Um, I don't know the details on that murder, who exactly he killed and why, or why they're saying he was involved in it. Um, but he's had his day in court. You know, I'm sure a lot of fingers were pointing at him. And whatever the case may be, they had enough evidence to convict this guy. And he's doing life in prison. Now, of course, when he called into Mr. Criminal, I think Criminal had him on his podcast to kind of verify how deep in the game he was. See, a lot of people will do that. Though, if they have a podcast and they have a cer certain image to uphold, they'll live vicariously through other people. You know, they'll call, have people call in that are doing a gang of time. They'll interview them. And basically that like lends to their credibility, you know, because the homeboy's doing all day, you know, hey, homes, hey, you get that. You get first thing they do. Did you get that homes? You get that right from the top. They want the viewers and the people to know that they're looking out for them. But what they don't say is how that person got there and what they did to contribute to him getting there. See, when you're running around doing crime, you're basically uh, uh, um, allowing that person to be around you, and you guys. And what you're doing is you're feeding that crime. You're feeding that, you know, um, you're enabling. You're feeding that person into being more of a criminal. 
So anything they do, albeit it's not your fault, Holmes, each man has his own decisions to make. You contributed in some part to that. Because you have an image or, or you're part of a crime family or you're part of a group or even rapping about gangster shit, you know, that makes this person feel a certain way. And some people feel empowered by that. And so they go out there and they do things they not necessarily would have done, whether it's to prove to themselves that they're really about that business or to prove to you and those around you that they're about that business. Anyway, so he has this guy call in and I thought, OK, they're homeboys. You know, they, they rap together. Um, they got a long history together. So he's just interviewing his homeboy again. It's going to lead to his credibility. People are going to be like, damn, Mr. Criminal's a real one, bro. He really knows people doing life. And he really has homeboys that are about the business that are in there for murking people. And oh, okay, yeah, he's a real one. Is he? Because the other night I'm listening and a rap diss song comes out. And this is the season of the diss song. This is the season of the sickness, like Brother Lynch said, right? Lately, every rapper in the industry is going at it. You got Chris Brown boning everything uh, Quavo touches. You got Rick Ross fucking, hey, get in your cell. You know, he's trying to lock Drake up. You got Drake and Kendrick Lamar going at it. You got Future just fucking, you know, getting, getting money, getting paid. You got all these different rappers going at it and disrespecting each other. It's the season of the diss, right? Mexicans usually don't involve themselves in dissing. Or that's not the way it used to be. That banging on wax shit, um, was for the birds, not the huelga, right? Now, there has been plenty of northern and southern songs that have not necessarily dis. I guess you could, that's a, a short word for disrespect. Um, but they've spoken upon the adversary. And usually that leads into some real street shit. Okay? They don't just bang on wax like that. Usually things that they talk about, they've either, already done previously or they're about to do. You know, when you disrespect the other side and you bang on wax homes, you know, in, in the Mexican gang culture, that's considered poop butt shit. That's considered, hey, homes, that guy's all robber. All he's doing is talking about it. But there are those that will speak upon things and will actually carry out what they're talking about. So this guy Diablo does a diss song and he exposes Mr. Criminal for being a rata. He exposes Mr. Criminal for uh, making some statements against him. Now, whether that's true or not, um, when you say those words, and, and, and I have to kind of wiggle myself around this, because this is a very serious accusation. This is very serious. You know, when you call a person a rat, um, say they spoke on you. When you call a person a chomo, um, you know, a, a weirdo, anything like that, it's very serious. It can have people hurt. Um, I know. I know personally how it is, right? Um, it's just not something to be taken lightly. And when you say that, you know, it could definitely fucking damage your credibility if you don't have no the correct paperwork or if you definitely don't have um, some substance behind it. Now, this guy knows Mr. Criminal better than I do, better than a lot of us do. He knows him in real life. These were camaradas. These were homeboys. They rocked together for a long time. They made music together. He chilled on Mr. Criminal's couch loading up the drum, like he says in the song. And allegedly, Mr. Criminal turned his back on him, decided to give him up for whatever reason. This is what he's saying in this song. Now, people have been hearing whispers about uh, Mr. Criminal um, ever since Cuete got on his head. Ever since Cuete decided that for whatever reason he was going to be calling Criminal out for the fade. And again, even though Criminal has begun, begun um, converting and going the Christian route, I seen where Cuete, the rapper, said, hey, homes, I don't care about none of that. He's a, hey, he believes in God too. But when you sign up to gangbang, when you sign up for a personal uh, image and you sign up for a certain persona, homes, regardless if you believe in the Lord or not, homes, you still need that. And he still needs that faith. So he wants fades over here. You got rappers in prison talking about criminal um, told on them, basically contributed to them getting life. Now, let's dissect that. When someone catches life, it's because of their actions. But there are a lot of things, a lot of he said, she said, and a lot of people pointing fingers in directions that could hinder your defense, that can make you look worse, that can fuck up your credibility and, and can mess your case up, man. There's definitely people um, that, you know, have made statements or whatever and think that, hey, Holmes, I didn't testify, so it's not a big deal. It's not a big issue. You know, yeah, they tricked me or yeah, at that point in time, um, the detective said one thing and I said another, whatever. Well, however you want to justify it, that's, that's on you. 
And again, I'm not here to judge anyone or point any fingers or disrespect anyone in that capacity. Because again, without paperwork, man, it truly is not. And even with paperwork nowadays, paperwork um, is not like it used to be. Paperwork can be created by AI. Paperwork can be uh, uh, manipulated by people that are good on computers. I mean, there's no way to truly know anymore. It's basically one person's word against another person's word. And people, depending upon who they like more, are going to go with who they like. That's just the way the, that's the world we live in. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter because it's, that person's still going to be sitting down for life. In this case, it's the rapper Diablo. He's still going to be doing life unless he gets an appeal and somehow they change a, a law and he's able to get some get backs. Um, and the other person is going to continue to do what they do. But again, let me express this. This is why it becomes such a dangerous game. This is why it becomes so real. If criminal allegedly really did this, well, his credibility is shot. His career is over. See, when you're a gangster rapper, that's your persona. That's your image. You put yourself in a box. You're considered a, a, a gangster. People look at you like, hey, Holmes, you're part of a barrio. You're representing something bigger than you. You know, you need to carry yourself to a certain standard. People look towards you for inspiration. There's a lot of youngsters that are just getting into the South Side style, maybe just got jumped in a barrio that like to bump people like Mr. Criminal and other rappers. I'm not even going to mention their names in this spill, right? Um, this is their inspiration. This is the person when they're ironing their tramas, they bump, you know, because um, this guy uh, uh, upholds that image of what they think they should be or how they should look. And then when something like this comes out, it's a big letdown, you know, and then people start to feel a certain way. When you're out there bumping baking soda breath, you know, online and talking about how much cars you have, how bad you are, how much dirt you did, what your credibility is, the people you know, um, then you better stand firm in that. And there better not be uh, no monkey wrench thrown in your unicycle homes. There, but there better not be no dirt. And believe me, everybody has something. And in social media, everything shall come. All the cream will rise to the top, brother. Can have a shot of coffee, right? Everything's going to come to the top. You can't hide your past from social media. There's going to be somebody that digs something up on you because they don't like you for whatever reason. They don't believe you. They believe you're fronting. Now with Mr. Criminal, it's all over the place. There's a lot of people that believes he's fronting, you know, up until the point of people saying nothing. And, and best believe that this just didn't start. I heard about this a month ago. You know, these whispers were already out there. I heard from somebody, a hey, Holmes, just sit back and enjoy the ride. There's going to be uh, something dropping on Mr. Criminal that's going to rain on his parade. It's going to shut down his shop. Because of the group he was representing as a whole, because of his Southsider mannerisms and style, you know, this is something you cannot come back from. You can't be putting your homeboys away for life or being any part of that, homes, and expect to still carry on in your career, still be a gangster rapper and still be believed or be believable. No one's going to believe that. Now, this is why you don't get into social media beefs with other people because they're going to start digging. They're going to start looking into your past. Now, what boggles my mind and what trips me out is there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, especially in Southern California, Northern California as well. Um, but you don't really see too many Northern California rappers beefing with each other. If you notice that. Um, they try to keep their stuff in-house and behind the scenes. And I'm sure if there's any discrepancies in any beef, um, they know how to handle it um, through their chain of command. You know, because if you're, and, and I said it a long time ago, when you're living that lifestyle, if you're a gang member or consider yourself a gang member, and that's the image you're putting out there for the people to see, but you're also a rapper and trying to have a rap career, you're putting yourself in a box. First and foremost, you know, you're not going to be uh, uh, doing shows at the MGM Grand or doing shows you know what I'm saying? In, in New York City, homes, you're going to be doing shows at the local car wash or fucking the local fairgrounds, homes. Like I said, you're going to be performing right after Los Lobos and Los Lonely Boys. That's just how it is. You know, you're going to be the fucking opening act for Paul Rodriguez at the fucking Mohegan Casino. That's how that goes. Right now, um, if you want to be doing big things, then you have to be open for all people and a lot of people, they're not into that gangster image. There's a lot of the West Coast gang related uh, rappers that people from the East Coast, New York, uh, uh, Pittsburgh, Boston, whatever, they don't give a fuck about. They don't care, man. They don't know anything about the politics, anything about the West Coast gangs, and they could care less, right? If you're a good rapper, you're a good rapper. 
but you kind of put them off homes when you're hollering all this shit that they can't identify with and they don't know about. And so your fucking fan base is right there. When you fuck off that fan base, when your credibility is shot and you're no good anymore to that fan base, well, then you have nothing. Your career is over. Everything you strive for and worked hard for is gone because the street politics and the street game has now leaked over into your rap career. So with Mr. Criminal, this is definitely going to hinder and damage his career. Very, very much so. And it's now dangerous. It's very dangerous for him. Because if you're being accused of being a rat and telling on someone that got life in prison, if this man is making a diss song and putting it out there, for whatever reason he decided to keep it hush-hush for a long time, to keep it on the unders. I mean, you know, I'm sure this guy already knew what time it was when he went on Mr. Criminal's podcast and stamped his G-ism, right? When he stamped his verified that, you know, Mr. Criminal was his boy and everything. For whatever reason he had, he kept that fucking ace in the hole. He didn't say anything. But now since there's been beef, between Mr. Criminal and other podcasters and other rappers, it's now came to the light. And like I said, I was told a month ago, man, that this was going to come to the light, that there's paperwork floating around on Mr. Criminal. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. But I was told by, you know, someone that is really in the game, like, hey, bro, just sit back, get your popcorn and enjoy it. But I don't enjoy that. I'm not about tearing people down and seeing people hurt, seeing people's whole, everything they've strived for and worked hard for go down the drain. But if you make your bed, you will lie in it. You know, you can't be here licking your fucking lips like an L.A. Huje video and talking about having all these low riders and wearing all this fake jewelry and, and having your old lady show her that thoughts and do all this and basically slap people in the face and talk about how hard you are and how cool you are. And then this come out on you because this right here will make you turn towards the Lord. Now, it's a very convenient move. And I think criminal knew that this was coming. I think he knew that these guys were going to put something out there on him because he looks very guilty. You know, his stilo done switched up all of a sudden. There's going to be a lot of people that defend him and say, hey, Holmes, you know, hey, it's a good thing he's going to the Lord's. And you're absolutely right. It is. It's always a great thing when a person finds their higher power and they're able to fucking let it be known. That's always a great thing. But not when you're using it as a crutch to get away and run from, from something that fucking you done. Something you signed up for. Now... Whether paperwork comes out or not, we'll see. Again, everyone's sitting back with popcorn waiting. Everyone loves drama. They want to see someone fail. I don't see, want to see this man fail. I want to see this man survive. And I think at this point, if he really did that, if he really told um, on Mr. Diablo, if he really was involved in that case, his best bet is to pack up, close down shop, sell those low riders and get the fuck on. Because there's serious business behind serious business, if you understand what I'm saying. You know, there's no way he's going to be able to go perform or push his crime family or even push his pa his Pastor Silver Lake shit onto anyone. It's unbelievable. No one's going to believe it. Now his name is forever tainted. Now only people believe is that you got that man life in prison, that that man um, said it out of his own mouth. Why he went on your podcast and chose to, um, again, man, there's a lot of things behind the scenes that real ones understand and know. Um, sometimes you have to close your mouth because certain people got at certain people and certain things are certain money's being exchanged. It just is the way it is. I don't want to elaborate too much. Um, those that know what it is, know what it is, right? Now, is it a dangerous situation for criminal? It, it definitely is, man. If you know, you know, especially in Southern California, movements happen behind the scenes differently there. And it's it's dangerous. It was, can I guess you, Mr. Criminal? Right? What Mr. Criminal needs right now is guidance, and I'm about to give him some knowledge he can't get in college. Run, homie. <laughs> Pack up shop and run. Get out of there. Go with Swifty Blue to fucking Arizona or something. Get the fuck up out of here because right now, there's a lot of people that are disgruntled with this man. There's a lot of people that he was showing off to. I remember when he first did a video and he mentioned my name. And up until that point, the only time I had ever mentioned Mr. Criminal's name was to shed a good light on her, to say his music was decent, um, or to say people would ask me, hey, you know who he is? Oh, yeah, I see his podcast. Yeah, go peep it out, man. You know, it's another dude, uh, Rasa, you know, making moves. Go trip out on it. Um, because I respect everybody and their get down, and I don't knock anyone's hustle. And, you know, he's, I don't support D.O.s and fuck D.O.s and this, this, and that, and Gunners Collective, and he's saying this and saying that. And basically, he got played out of pocket by a troll that uh, cloned my channel was acting like me and 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 got that dude to fall susceptible to the bullshit. Got, he got played, right? I mean, I never something, said nothing bad about him. So I made a video, um, a direct message, letting them know exactly how I feel. 
and how, you know, sometimes you can get played out of pocket by another man. But that's what happens when you're easily influenced by strange men. No diddy. So, you know, with uh, Mr. Criminal Man, I wish him the best. And will it get tricky for him? Absolutely it will. You know, if this is the truth, and believe it or not, man, this is just coming from, from my perspective on it. You know, the way he's acting, the way he's conducting himself, the way he has now found the Lord, and he's trying to get away from the gangster and the politics and, and things of that nature. That leads me to believe two things. Whoever he was functioning under or functioning with has decided to say, hey, Holmes, you're on your own now. Um, we were unaware of this situation. You know, you told on your homeboy, um, it's all bad. And when you have a platform and you have, um, you know, an image or you're looked at as somebody in the game, Holmes, and something like this comes up, it's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt your heart. It's going to hurt your relationships. It's going to hurt your family. Um, it's going to hurt you, period. The best thing to do is get away from everything. Go. Stop licking your lips on camera. Stop justifying your actions. Stop laughing about it. Um, stop trying to play a role because this is not a laughing matter. This is not a game. You know, when a person, um, and again, man, I'm not siding with Diablo and saying that he's telling the truth or he's right. Um, but I think at this point in time, this guy's doing life. You know, what horse does he have in the race? Why would he say this all of a sudden? You know, this is something that's been brewing and, and percolating in the back for a minute now. And I think Criminal knows that. And I think he knew the shit was going to hit the fan. Someone got at him like, hey, Holmes, the paperwork's coming out. Um, it's only a matter of time. So he started trying to um, basically pull away from that image. He already, you know, and you can when you talk bad and you talk shit and you act all high powered and all super South Sider and, and, and you're fucking that one. Um, and then something comes out. I mean, you got egg on your face, huh? Mr. Webble call you scrambled egg because now you know it don't look good and i know man i know i feel for him i don't hate on that man hey i don't envy him and i don't fucking i, I don't i'm glad i'm not in this position because this is a serious position for people that think it's just social media and now nah, it's gonna blow over nah shit like this don't ever blow over someone gets blown over you know and that's the truth and it's unfortunate but that's just the way it is so the best thing for crims to do man is get out the way way the fuck out the way because his career is washed. You can never go perform, you know what I'm saying, at the, at the Segunda. He can never go perform at the Santa Fe Springs or at the, the Remate because um, there's only going to be three people there that don't know what it is until they know what it is. And then they're going to jam too. You know, it, it's fucked up. But, you know, it's called karma. When you're licking your lips and showing off and talking about everything you have and, you're, and, and what other people don't have and how you're better than them because you have a couple more gold chains or a couple more lowriders then people are going to feel some type of way. And they're going to say, you also have bad, a bad case or you also have uh, snitching allegations. And in that case, man, that just fucking hurts your heart, huh? And again, man, you can, then if you choose to mock the Lord, the Lord knoweth everything that's in your heart. So I don't know. That's my two cents on the situation. Is it serious? It's very serious, man. Um, is there paperwork out there? Not that I've seen, you know, but allegedly um, there's going to be pretty soon. And so, uh, you know, whatever... Diablo's decision making was to to talk about this. He did it. Like I said, it's the season of the diss, man. And uh, this is real. This is real life shit right here. You know, when it comes to the Mexican gang culture, you know, this is a an accusation that is horrendous, and it's something that you know you have to live with, um, or or don't live at all. You know, that's how it really gets. With that being said, I hope that you move forward with a purpose. And again, I'm trying to fucking. Uh, 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 take shortcuts around this situation because um, it's a dangerous game and uh, and I wish that have often nothing but the best, man. You know, nothing but the best. With that being said, I hope that you move with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming. Remember, at the end of the day, it's all about the strive, the struggle, the struggle, the strive. Um, when you're trying to be a social media platform, a uh, 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 content creator and, and trying to be that one, well, they're going to find out everything about that one. That's just how it is. Believe me. it's it's I know it. So, Thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive, struggle, struggle, strive for what I truly believe in. And that's the betterment of all people. I wish Mr. Criminal the best. I, I wish Diablo the best. And everyone that's rocking that narrative because they don't like Criminal for whatever reason. I don't have nothing against that man. Um, I just know bullshit when I see it. And uh, bullshit, Mr. Crim. Bullshit. Don't mock the Lord. Um, again, hey, Super Northenio coming up later on this afternoon, man. Be ready for it. You already know what it is, man. Episode 2, Season 2, we gonna get it in. Ooh, this one's gonna be good. I'll just tell you right now. Thea, 
Don't like tortas. We'll leave it at that. Bang, bang.